is a jewel. So she relies on it 
When she threw that there's not a lot of people. And she did a cotton. And she would only drop her tail off if she absolutely did. Sometimes they do. Sometimes the predator is not, has not eaten it, she go back and eat it. Just reabsorb all of the, that yummy energy. Oh, okay, two questions. What are those holes on the side of her head? Does anyone have a guess? There is one. You went here before? Like the turtle, she spends a lot of time digging. She likes to dig in the sand and the mud for her food. She likes to eat something that lives in the garden that has a shell. Snails. She likes to eat snails and slugs. Those are her favorite foods. <laughs> she lives in the desert. So normally she lives in a place that's very, very dry. I don't think she can swim, and she definitely doesn't want to live in the water. What do they eat? I just told you guys. What do they eat? Nails and slugs. No. They actually have very strong jaws so they can crack through snail shells, crack through beetle shells, and other bug exoskeletons. How many years do they live? They can live for about 20 years, so they are not as long lived as our turtles and our tortoises. So you guys know what? Reptiles in general do live for a much longer time than mammals. Um, so if you are ever going to get a reptile as a pet, just keep that in mind. They do live for a much longer time. Hey, Kevin! I'm going to the bathroom. All right. Are you guys ready to see our last animal? I will tell you guys, our last animal is not a reptile. So far, we have seen three reptiles. And we're going to show you guys a mammal for our last animal. Mm. And originally it came from Europe, but I will give you guys a hint. This animal has actually been domesticated, which means that a lot of people do live with this animal, have this animal as a pet. Not a dog or a cat or a rabbit. Um, this animal was originally domesticated because it was so smart. It was very easy to train. And way, way back, when people were still hunting out in the woods, they trained this animal to go and pick up the pheasant or the rabbit or whatever that they just shot and bring it back to them. If it's related to an otter, a weevil, a wolverine. Ooh, I heard it. A ferret. Because if they were out in the wild, they would mostly be awake at night. 
So those whiskers help them feel their way even when it's dark. They've also got oh, a really good nose. And all those adaptations, as well as their sharp little claws and their sharp little teeth, help them to be great at hunting. They would eat crawfish, they would eat fish, they would eat lizards, snakes, birds, so many things. Which is why, oh, you're going to go in? Good girl. Which is why it's actually illegal to have these as pets in California. Because they are so good at hunting and they have babies so fast. If our ferrets were to get loose, or if somebody's pet ferret was to get loose, there's no telling how many native California tiger salamanders they'd eat, how many baby California quail they would eat. All of our native wildlife would be in danger from these ferrets. So we actually get checked up on more for our ferrets than our lions. Because if a lion escapes, it's really easy to find that big old lion. But if a ferret escapes, ooh, it's hard to get them back because they are so sneaky. Oh, this is her poop dance. Now they've also got a really cool feature on their body because of that connection to otters. There's something in between their fingers that helps them swim. They've got webbing in between their paws, in between their fingers on their paws. Where are you going to go? I think she wants your lunch. Yes, to stay a webbing in between their fingers that helps them even if they're on land or on water. Marcella is our wiggle worm. Do you want to try to go through the tunnel? Like, maybe. Maybe. No? Now there's another animal they're related to. And it's an animal that we see around here all the time. And sometimes, even if you don't see it, you smell it. They are related to skunks. And that means that not only do they really like sticky things, they second row, I have second row, eyes on me. Can I have them? I see him with the glasses and the plaid shirt. And he's looking around at me. Oh, there we go. Hello. Can I have this? Not only do they like things that are stinky, they also are quite stinky themselves. Oh. Have you ever noticed, if you ever see a ferret come out, she's going to be rolling herself all over the ground. She's going to rub her body, especially her back, all over things. Because she wants to make things smell like her. It's her way of marking her ears. Good job. You're showing us how you go in between those, those sticks so easily. Oh, but they're getting a special treat right now for being so good on program. And that special treat is the fat content and the salt content is really tasty to them. So even though it's not meat, it's high in protein. Could she go where? Oh, could she fit under the crack of that door? small for her. I think that's too small. But she can go through some pretty tight spaces. Yeah. Can she go in water? No. Yes. Yeah. She can go in water. Now, she can't swim a really, really long way. She's not going to be deep diving. But those those webbed uh, paws that she has, the webbing between her fingers, is going to help her if she goes into the water for a little bit. Now, she's probably mostly just going to be on the edge of the water, reaching in to catch a crab. Because we're domestic ferrets, they live with people, so they don't really have any uh, predators, as we think of them. Uh, but this domestic, uh, the uh, European whole cat that they're descended from definitely has predators. Maybe like bigger mammals, like you think bigger cats, or when they're, used, when they're places where there's wolves still in Europe, those would probably eat them. And probably big hawks or big eagles could catch these guys. Now, I think Olivia was telling you about our black-footed ferret in North America, right? Our native ferret that we have out in the plains in the Midwest. Those are really important predators. They love to eat prairie dogs. And unfortunately, the prairie dog population and the black-footed po ferret population are in a little bit of trouble 
because we keep developing over that land where they need to live. We're building new houses, we're building new farms. And so they're having a lot of trouble. So for the black-footed ferret, kind of humans are their biggest predator, their biggest problem predator. Archer. Where do they live? You mean these girls specifically? Marcella and Carmela live here at the Open Zoo, but again, they live in a special place that's just for our program animals, just for our, our education animals. So they have a big outdoor cage. This is summer right now. They're outside all the time, and they live together. When I went to pick them up, they were sleeping in a cardboard box all curled up in some blankets. Oh, my. Can they roll in a ball? Absolutely. They love to be curled up really, really small, really tight when they're sleeping. Or if something scares them, they might do that also. Kind of like humans do, right? I was saying about those snakes are ball pythons because they curl into a ball when they're scared. Humans kind of do the same thing. If somebody goes, boo, you kind of punch your back, right, and curl up. So not as long as humans, huh? Now these girls are seven. There. So these are adults, they're not going to get much bigger. If we had a male, he would be bigger, but at the moment we've only got the two females. Uh, face shirt, uh, in the back. How high can they jump? How high can they jump? How high can they jump? Well, they're not very good at pushing up off the ground and jumping around. Yeah. 
Yeah. 